Good Monday afternoon. I'm meteorologist Tim Pandages here with your tropical update. Things have turned a little bit more active. Yesterday we talked about two separate investigative areas, 94 and 93. They're still present, but 93 in the smaller print there done on purpose because it's pretty much completely vanished out in the Atlantic Basin. I'll show you that on satellite imagery in just a second. But 94L, that's one to watch. Chances have increased for that to develop in the next name system, and that would be Fred. All right, here's the latest in the overall basin. Been a full month since we've had a named storm out there in the Atlantic. Elsa, the last advisory from the Hurricane Center was on July 9th, so a month to the day. 94L, as I mentioned, looking much healthier and it is starting to organize. Chances on that system up to 80%. And by later today, we may have a potential tropical cyclone or a tropical depression. Wondering what a potential tropical cyclone is? I'm gonna talk about that in just a second. And 93L's chances have pretty much gone away and kaput. All right, here's the Atlantic Basin tropical names. We're up to Elsa. Next one is up to Fred, and then potentially Grace after that as we get, you know, farther out in the season. Here's a look at the basin. Invest 94L chances within the short term and longer range, five days at 80%. That's classified as high chances of developing. And then Invest 93L has a 0% chance in both time frames of developing. And satellite imagery is just unbelievable how it's gone to nothing. All right, so potential tropical cyclone. Now there is the potential of this happening. Before it gets the traditional upgrade to a tropical depression, or a tropical storm. Now, what this does is it basically opens up the National Hurricane Center to issue watches, warnings, advisories, because the storm, despite lacking a center of circulation, is still bringing tropical storm impacts to land masses, and the Leeward, Windward Islands are likely going to be seeing those impacts, so we may see that uh, upgrade or that designation before we get to a tropical depression or tropical storm. Here's where it is currently. Again, it's been impacting the north side of Barbados, passing just to the north there. And on infrared satellite, this looks a little bit better than it did yesterday. This, again, tells us the temperatures of the cloud tops, why that's important. The colder the cloud tops, the stronger the thunderstorms. Colder cloud tops are shown from the darker colors of black, some dark reds. And when you see whites, those are extremely cold cloud tops. And when they're starting to organize around that center, that gives us uh, an indication that this is trying to get its act together and start to look more and more like a tropical system, maybe a tropical depression or a tropical storm. Now, I want to bring your attention to its relatively small size. The diameter on this storm is roughly 270 miles. That's pretty small for a tropical system. Now, why that matters is because small systems are very susceptible to big fluctuations in strength. So as this go for, goes forward, we could see this rapidly build up to a tropical storm and then fluctuate in either direction as it heads over very warm waters and then eventually has some pretty significant land interaction as indicated by some of the models going forward. Here's how it looks on visible satellite imagery. Again, starting to get some of that moisture fetch from the south. We've got some thunderstorm activity. You can see it on visible bubbling on up there and some of those cloud towers, and it's building off towards the northwest. Even some central dense overcast starting to be a little more evident there as well. It doesn't have any lack of fuel. Sea surface temperatures have been running above average, and they're over the threshold we need, which is 80 degrees or warmer. We're in the low 80s. Even as you get over into the uh, eastern parts of the Caribbean, you'll get slightly warmer than that. Now, yesterday we had talked about the big influence of dry air, Saharan dust has been dominating the Atlantic Basin. And you can see it's still there evident from the rust color to the north. That's extremely dry mid-levels of the atmosphere. But as this is going forward, it's not really seeing that getting pulled into the actual system. That's going to be the real um, detrimental effect of this dry air as it gets entrained into the uh, central circulation. Now, remember how I talked about how small it was in size? Small systems are also much better at kind of fending off the dry air and almost enclosing and protecting their inner circulation. So that could be a, a potential scenario here, kind of fending off the drier air. All right, let's jump over briefly to 93L. This is it. This is where the last location was indicated from the Hurricane Center. And I mean, pff, there's nothing there. We flip it over to visible and it's been completely sheared apart just within the last 12 to 18 hours. All right, let's look at some modeling now. We'll go with just 94L because 93L is no longer with us. 94L on both the global models, the GFS and uh, the European, show it still as an open wave. 
as it currently is right now, no divine center of circulation just yet. But going out to tomorrow afternoon, we do potentially see it either as that potential tropical cyclone, although by this point it probably is up to a tropical depression or tropical storm as it heads towards Puerto Rico. So it could have some gusty winds, likely some heavy rain squalls, things like that, as it builds over the island and potentially runs into uh, the Dominican Republic. Now, if that does occur, this is the home to the highest peak in the entire Caribbean, Pico Duarte, over 10,000 feet high. Uh, that will disrupt the circulation for sure. And if it's an overall weak system in that land interaction, it's going to have a tough go. But again, this is a general small area. In the scheme of things, it can go just north or just south and remain, uh, keep its structure intact. So we'll see how that plays on out there. But this is looking like Wednesday night into Thursday. So that's about as far out as I'm going to take those global models right now. Let's look at the GFS ensembles. Now, this is the GFS model run several different times. We changed the variables up to get a slightly different outcome. Now, I do want to preface looking at this with the fact that until there's a defined center of circulation, models tend to have a tough time not only pointing out where exactly it is to start off the model, but where it will go from there. So this is not set in stone. It will change. And I want to show you the longer range here. Usually I'll stop this at around 72 hours out, but I want to show you the full suite because by this point in time, we see a large divergence in the storm potential track. That's why we have the cone of uncertainty. It gets larger the farther out you go because a lot more variables can change and the track can significantly change too by that time. So is it potentially going to head towards Florida? Yeah, it's potentially going to do that, but it can also stay off to the south, head into the Gulf of Mexico, or loop out to sea. Now, what I will say is that the models are sensing what there is present in the Atlantic Basin, and that's a big ridge of high pressure that's located over here in the central Atlantic, and that is diverting the track to the west-northwest. So where it can pick up a weakness in the ridge and drive north is still yet to be determined, but just take this with a grain of salt. And it by no means indicates what the intensity may be. Because, again, that land interaction, any dry air can really just destroy this system before it even gets going. Here's a look at all the other spaghetti models, all the different models. So we looked at the GFS. Now these are all the rest of them. Similar scenario here. But, again, until we get that defined center of circulation, a little bit hard to look at those models and exactly where it will go. All right, that's the latest for you. Reach out and be social if you have any questions. If there is an upgrade later to a potential tropical cyclone or a tropical depression, we'll have another video coming your way. But until then, you can find me on social media if you have any questions. Enjoy the rest of your Monday.